I think we can have um, five years of 4% growth if we put in place the Trump uh, program. I think actually it's not that hard, although we're only growing at 1.5% now, so that would be a pretty significant rise in growth. So I think a lot of uh, businesses have been sitting on just piles of capital now for six or seven years. They've been profitable. They haven't been reinvesting it. And I think having a, a pro-business president, for once, um, will uh, unleash a lot of that capital that's been pent up. Hillary Clinton was part of the uh, administration that I was part of that had the four year, the only four years of surplus uh, and had a strategy very much like hers, which was uh, raising uh, taxes on those who could afford it the most and having a strong public investment strategy. And that led to the last, that was part of the last time we had 4% growth. As we look on the long-term deficit, I do think that the most important thing we could do right now is to, in a responsible way, tighten the labor market, front load a jobs plan uh, that's that's fine for the long term, but gets more demand in the economy, tighter labor market uh, in the economy, so we could get the kind of stronger growth that we all want. Towns that used to be vibrant third, fourth generation coal mining towns, where people had middle class lifestyles, um, you know, where you had uh, you know little league and you know vibrant communities, have been decimated. Uh, because, you know, uh, we have to worry about uh, global warming and therefore all 10,000 of you people have to lose your job. It's, it's typical liberalism, right? It's not, you know, the, it's not the donors to the Sierra Club that are paying the price for this. It's real workers who are now in unemployment lines. You go to these towns and where you have vibrant communities that are now, you know, people on meth. It's, it's a disaster. You know, you might feel comforted that there are some issues that with Donald Trump where perhaps he can't do certain things because of the United States Congress. But kind of imagine going through that debt crisis with Donald Trump. If you are a uh, financial professional and you're looking at a Trump presidency, start figuring out how you are going to deal with unpredictable volatility because Congress can limit some things, but we have learned that nobody limits what that guy says and that he spends no time studying the complexity of economics. I mean, look, the guy is a businessman. Um, you know, I, I just object to what, you know, Gene said. He doesn't have all these fancy economists who tell him what to do and blah, blah, blah. Look, this is, this is the heart of what this election is about. Donald Trump knows how to create jobs. He's created them. You can. There's a lot of criticisms of Donald Trump, and a lot of them are valid. And I don't agree with a lot of things, Gene, that uh, that Donald Trump has said. That's for sure. But these attacks against him as a businessman are ridiculous. I mean, this is one of our great, iconic businessmen. He has created, created one of the greatest brands around the world. You don't do that unless you're an incredibly good. He took 13 million dollars and he created a multi-billion-dollar organization. And one of, the, I, I just find it highly objectionable. I think it's one of the things wrong with the political class that these people have never hired a single worker in their whole life, you know, would criticize somebody who's been, uh, you know, so incredibly effective and successful in, in running businesses his whole life.